So a little over a year ago, I was looking for a new guitar and I was looking for something a little bit different. You see, I have been a Fender guy for, you know, as long as I can remember, mostly playing Telecasters and Jazzmasters and a couple Gibson guitars, um, but I've really never branched out of that. Um, and I really never was a huge Strat guy. I started out playing a Mexican-made Strat, but I quickly moved on to Telecasters and SGs and Jazzmasters and things like that. So around this time, I was hearing a lot about the PRS Silver Sky SE and how great the SE models were. And I've played a bunch of SE models in the past, but I never owned one myself. So about a little over a year ago, I decided to pick up the John Mayer Signature Silver Sky SE, and I wanted to get into kind of a Strat sound, but I wanted something a little bit different. So today I wanna to share with you my thoughts after playing this guitar for a year, using it uh, live on Sunday mornings, recording things with it, and just my general thoughts after a year of playing this guitar. Let's get into it. So before we get started, I wanna let you know I'm gonna be putting timestamps in the description below. So if you wanna kinda of jump around in the video, you can do that. And if you have any specific questions about the guitar or my experience with it, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'd be happy to answer your question. All right, so I wanna quickly give you an overview of this guitar and some of the specs that it has. Um, to start off, it has a poplar body and this version is finished in stone blue. And the version I have also has the rosewood fretboard, but you can also get this in a maple fretboard. And it is 22 frets, a 25 and a half inch scale length with an eight and a half inch fretboard radius. And this guitar comes equipped with these made for this guitar JM635S pickups. And this guitar is completely inspired by the core model Silver Sky. Um, so these pickups are meant to sound just like that one. And my understanding is that these pickups are kind of modeled after a vintage uh, S style pickup and they're a little bit darker than some Strat pickups, and I think the intention is that uh, with kind of a vintage instrument, the pickups have kind of gotten a little darker over time, so you kind of hear that um, in these pickups. Um, and controls-wise, you have a five-way blade switch with a master volume and two tones, one for the bridge pickup and one for the neck and middle. Um, another unique thing to this guitar is um, the headstock and the tuning pegs. The headstock is reversed from a normal PRS headstock, so that's just a kind of an interesting thing. Um, but that is kind of a quick overview of the specs. This is a bolt-on neck, of course, like any S-style guitar that you would play. Um, but let's go ahead and hear what each of the pickup uh pickups sound like and some of the different combinations between them. So quickly, I wanna give you an overview of my signal path for today. I'm gonna to be running into my pedal board for some overdrive, delay, and reverb. And then from there, running into uh, the Tonex pedal, running a capture of a Bad Cat Cub 15R, and then out of the Tonex into my interface. <laughs> Thank you. 
After playing this guitar for a year after using it live and for recording in a bunch of different scenarios, how do I feel about it? What has my experience been with it? Well, to start off, I think it is a really unique guitar. I don't think it is just kind of a Strat copy. I think it's its own thing. Um, but if you're looking for something a little bit different than a Strat, but something that is kind of in that same vein, in that same family, I think this is a really great option. And I think PRS makes really great budget-friendly guitars in the SE line. So quickly, I wanna go over some of the pros and cons of this guitar, for me at least. And to start out, this thing feels and sounds really great. Um, I don't think I have played a guitar sub $1,000 that has felt this good. I've played a lot of Fender stuff, a lot of Gibson stuff in the you know last 20 years that has come under that price range and that are more budget friendly, whether it be you know the Squire stuff or some of the Made in Mexico stuff from Fender um, and some of the Epiphone stuff. But I really think that PRS in their SE line is kind of a step above when it comes to the playability and like the feel. Um, 
before getting this, I sat down and played a couple of strats and just the feel of them, they kind of sometimes can feel cheap and some of the parts can feel um, like they were just thrown together where this feels kind of like an instrument that was made for me. It kind of feels good to hold and it feels good to play. One of the other pros for me is that it sounds really good. I think the pickups sound really great. I think there's some positions in it that aren't my favorite, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but I think it sounds great. Um, I love the color of it. I love, for me, I love the bird inlays. That's kind of a sticking point for some people is they don't like the way that uh, PRS guitars look. But if you're looking kind of for a more understated PRS guitar, I think this is one to look at, obviously, whereas some of the higher end ones or some of the other models kind of have a little bit more of a flashy, you know, woods and colors and things like that. I think this is kind of a classic look and I just like it. Um, I think another pro for this guitar is the trim system. I've found it to be really nice and I've found that the guitar intonates and sounds really good without a ton of work. I mean, I haven't done much to it and um, sounds great and it plays great. Another thing that I like about this guitar is the neck. It is a satin neck, so if you can see there, um, it's pretty smooth and it just doesn't get caught like some kind of glossy necks can feel and just be a little sticky sometimes, especially once you, your hand gets pretty warm. Um, and I think the frets feel really nice. You know, some, sometimes on these budget guitars, the frets can feel a little sharp when you first get the guitar home, but I haven't really felt that with this. I think it, it feels good. Um, nothing bothers me. There's no kind of dead notes on the neck. It all kind of just works really well. All right, so now I wanna kinda of share with you some of the cons of this guitar, at least to me. And I wanna be completely transparent. I purchased this guitar with my own money and you know I have had some issues with it. There are some things that I don't like about it and I wanna share them with you um, so that you are aware. The first con for me and kind of of a lot of budget, you know, sub $1,000 guitars in my experience, uh, is the electronics and just like the quality control with the electronics. It could just be me, you know, that I got a bad one, but uh, the first few months of having the guitar, the middle pickup stopped working. I was able to take it back to uh, the shop that I got it from and they were able to fix it and troubleshoot it. And then a few months down the line, the same thing happened. The pickup stopped working again. Um, it's like I would have the neck and I would have the bridge and then in between there was nothing. I had it fixed again and everything was fine. And then after a few weeks, I've still had uh, issues with the switch over the past six months. And I'll be able to show it to you a little bit here. Sometimes the switch just cuts out and I kind of have to move it back and forth. And it is something that is just more indicative of cheaper budget guitars as sometimes the electronics have issues. I've had Fender guitars where the switches stopped working within you know, a year of having a guitar. I've had uh, other guitars where there's been electronic issues. So it's just something that seems to pop up more with the budget guitars. All right, so the second con for me, I think is the bridge pickup. It's just not my favorite bridge pickup sound. Um, I think I like it better than some of the strats that I tried out in this price range that were a little ice picky, but I still don't love the sound of the bridge pickup. I'm not sure what it is. I think if I keep this guitar long-term, I'll probably switch out these pickups. I really like the neck and the middle sounds and some of the in-between sounds, um, but really just don't love the bridge pickup. And it could be that I'm just not a fan of Strat bridge pickups, but it's just not my favorite bridge pickup. And then finally, another con is I don't love the tuning pegs on here. They kind of just feel plasticky and like they're gonna break. Haven't had any issues with them, um, but they're not my favorite. They just kind of feel like they could easily break. 
Um, but I haven't had any issues with them. They're just not my favorite. All right, so my final thoughts on the Silver Sky SE is, you know, I really love it. I think it is one of the best S style guitars that you can get for under a thousand dollars. And I've really enjoyed having an S style guitar, especially this one over the past year. I think the sounds work really well on a Sunday morning, having those in between positions, especially with like songs that have chorus and um, things like that, playing ambient parts. I think it's really fun to have those like kind of at your disposal. Um, it just gives you a lot of variations when you're playing on a Sunday to get a bunch of different tones in there, as well as, you know, playing around with the tone knobs. I think it just gives you a ton of variety and I think it re works really great. But let me know if you have any questions about the Silver Sky SE in the comments below. Let me know if you've played a PRS before and maybe your thoughts on PRS in general. And uh, thanks for checking out this video and I will see you all in the next one.